All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the comic industry a little bit, particularly about the Mark Wade versus Richard C. Meyer case that's been going on. This is nothing new. If you've been following it, it's been going on for a while now. This case got announced over the summer, I think, and it keeps going through like delay motions and stuff like that. Basically, the TLDR, if you don't know what's going on, is a man named Mark Wade who has big prominence and significance in the comic industry, pretty much blocked a deal from Richard C. Meyer, Diversity in Comics, what's his old name on YouTube now? It's uh, Comics Matter with ya boy, Zach. He had a Kickstarter, or not a Kickstarter, an Indiegogo. He put the Indiegogo out. It did really well. Then there was an announcement where it was going to go to Antarctic Press to be published in comic shops. Well, Mark Wade gave the publisher a call, talked to the guy on the phone, and then the next day it was announced that they would not be publishing it, and Mark Wade went to do victory laps all over the place on Twitter, Facebook, and gave interviews and all kinds of stuff. There's a long story with Mark Wade being a crazy person, but before we get into kind of what's been going on and some stuff that's come out recently, including an email talking about an industry blacklist where if you have the wrong think on certain issues, you no longer have jobs in the industry. Got an email from that, all coming from Tug, that umbrella guy, and I'm going to get to him too in a second. So real quick, this is Richard's GoFundMe. I'm going to link in the description. If you want to donate, this is to help his legal funds. It's similar to Vic Mignogna's, and what it is is it's to help him pursue his legal case. If you want to donate to it, it's there. Um, this is also tortoise interference. Same with Vic Mignogna's case, if you're following that. I know a lot of people on my channel are, so I want to just point that out. So the, the similarities here is, you know, a lot of NPCs trying to destroy another person's life. And he's had a lot of crap sling at him. I could do, a, I could do an hour-long video talking about the stuff this man's been through because of NPCs. So Mark Wade, a little recap on him, by the way. He's a big influencer in the comic industry particularly known for Kingdom Come, which is a really big comic, really well-known, famous comic. And he's got a temper tantrum and a big head. A lot of stories about him punching walls. A lot of stories about him sending black reefs to people he don't like when uh, their family members pass away and stuff like that. He's, uh, you know, one of those uh, guys that got to stand up for the, for the weak people. He's literally said several times, the strong protect the weak. And what he means by that is him, the big white man, protects the people of color. It's uh, kind of demeaning in a way. And he runs around doing all this virtue flexing. And, you know, Richard Meyer, a little edgy, really funny. The dude has children of color, all that stuff. The farthest thing from some kind of, uh, you know, evil extremist dude that they try to label on him. But, you know... Here's the problem with the comic industry. The comic industry considers criticism like a form of, you know, physical assault or something. It's a really strange. All of the websites that review comics, like News Rama here that I'm on right now, they all shill. Every comic is good. Every comic gets a high review. Every comic gets nines and tens. They're all amazing. Yet the sales are terrible. The comic book sales have been in the toilet for a long time. And, you know, no one gives them any criticism. It seems like, you know, Marvel Comics in particular is a big clown car. They don't know what they're doing. Most of the comics are just big jokes. They have a handful that are good. I used to do a lot of comic book news and covering the people that work in the industry on Twitter. And it's just depressing to cover them. They're, they're really mean, nasty people literally the most extremist forms of NPCs I've ever seen, and I just can't take them anymore. I just review random books and books I like now on my other channel, and I'm having a lot more fun with that over there. But it's just these people, you know, they're going to destroy the industry. It's already on its way into the sewer drain, and, you know, it's things like this that make people hate it even more. And I don't know. There's no saving these people. I think the industry needs to just crash and burn because of these people they're they're so infested like if there's one medium they completely own it's comic books and if you have a problem with that these people they will uh, they, they will do some nasty stuff you see all the stuff going on with tug and his kids 
And the stuff that they've done to Richard is even worse. So his info got out a while ago. And I've talked to some people, and they didn't want to share this stuff, but there's there's conversations out there that have happened in private Facebook groups talking about where his little ones catch the bus. And they were literally having a debate on if they should move on that information. It's disgusting, these people. And you know what? And they think that they're in the right here. They've wished to harm on him, all kinds of crazy stuff. And at the end of the day, you know, they're like, you know, because he criticizes their comics, they're like, well, why don't you put a comic out? So he did. And then when he tried to put it in the stores, they literally called stores and sh- and were like telling them to boycott the comics. Some were. And then Mark Wade goes and blocks the deal. So they recently have finally been in court. And recently, like Wade was on the stand. They talked to Wade and they asked him, well, what do you do you think? do you think Meyer is an extremist? And he says, it's a broad spectrum. It's either you hate, (laughs) you either hate others or you don't. Like, where's the broad spectrum there? I'll never understand that response. But anyway, recently, so there's two Duns that work in Anarch Press. There is Joe Dunn and Ben Dunn. Joe Dunn is who Mark Wade talked with on the phone. He's the publisher at Anarch Press. And that's the guy that he pretty much strong-armed. There's a really good video by a couple of people that have talked about the text messages between Mark and Joe where he was pretty much, you know, it came off as he was, the, you know, an abuser and Joe was the, the victim there. And he was like, you know, we okay? We all good? Like, basically, he knew he had messed up. And they get, they get Joe on the stand and they say, you know, did you have any influence on the on you know pulling back on jawbreakers? And he says, "No, no, I didn't. It was all 100% my decision." So this caused Mark Wade to go on a victory lap. He went on GoFundMe, posted that, and said, "See, look, they're lying. I never had anything to do with it. Now give me more money." <laughs> he said the trial is over, but yet he wanted more money for his GoFundMe. <laughs> it was a it was a funny thing. So, you know, case shut and closed, right? Not necessarily. So here's Ben Dunn, the editor-in-chief in in Antarctic Press. And here's where things get a little bit crazy. So here's a private conversation that got released by uh, then Umbrella Guy and Ben Dunn, which kind of runs counter to the points that Mark Wade was doing his little victory dance on. It kind of looks like the other Dunn was committing perjury on the stand and let's go ahead and read through this and you're going to see why hello my name is ben dunn and i was just made editor-in-chief in in antarctic press i wanted to thank you for mentioning the jungle comics indiegogo campaign i would like to someday clear up some misconceptions about our company and that's because they had a huge backlash huge backlash to uh turning down jawbreakers uh definitely for sure damaged their brand over in antarctic and he said sure that would be great actually First, I really like your program and actually have been following it for some time. I appreciate your opinions on the state of comics because they're bad and your opinions on the state of comics and pop culture. I would be happy to provide you previews of Anarchic Press Comics or answer any questions as best I can. And Tug responds, thanks. I've tried to be as reasonable towards Anarchic Press as I can given the recent events that transpired with Jawbreakers. Many creators and titles are solid that you all back. And the backing of independent projects is very worthwhile. People also want an alternative to what we perceive as issues with specific other companies. Still, a lot of people felt let down and angry, re, the the jawbreakers issue, namely the optic they were left with in the aftermath is that something you will or even can discuss, namely the discrepancy between Anarchic Press's statement and what DNC Diversity in Comics Richard C. Meyer was saying. Because a lot of people, myself included, waited on clarification about that, only to see radio silence, as it were, which was probably smart in the immediate then, by the way. And then Ben says, first, I want to apologize for taking so long to reply. I want to thank you for your fair assessment of the truth be told, Antarctic Press has always been on the fringe of the comic industry. Yet somehow we survived. We had high hopes for the success of Jawbreakers, but the virulent attack on my brother from the SJW side was unprecedented. Something we had never experienced in our 33 years in business. It was like Pearl Harbor for us. You have to understand that there were personal considerations as well. 
My brother's decision was heartbreaking because after the Wade call, he was afraid of the future of some of the friends who worked for Marvel. So here we go. My brother's decision was heartbreaking because after the Wade call, he was afraid of who the future of some of friends who worked for Marvel. So think about that, right? He's pretty much admitting right here that his brother said, you know, Mark Wade's going to screw us. And it's like he's so afraid of him that he was willing to go on the stand and lie. This is perjury. Now Ben Dunn is going to get called to the stand, and he's going to have to say, what's with this? Because it's already going to get used. I've known about these for a long time, and I couldn't say anything because it was a secret. But now that Tug's put them out in the public, I can talk about them. <laughs> and uh, this is pretty much the uh, slam dunk on Mark Wade. This is what's going to win that court case. And I just don't see how they can lie about this. The dude's pretty much admitting right here for his brother, who he's a close personal, I would say, business partner with and friend because they're family and run the company together. This is a, this is toast for them. So let's go on. Normally we would have ignored such attacks, but it began to intrude on, a, on his other job. And that is when he made he had to make the decision to cancel the book. Then the other side attacked and we were caught in the middle. It is a no win situation for us. So we thought it best to just remain silent. This of course led to much speculation of the course of action we took. I wonder what if we had stuck to our guns or if Wade had kept his nose out of it, would we have, would we even have been having this discussion? If nothing else, it exposed the seedy underbelly of the comics industry. So at least some good came out of it. So, if Wade had kept his nose out of it, there you go, right there again, boom, slam dunk. I mean, this is pretty much the smoking gun. You know, in like a court case, they say, we don't get the gun, get the weapon. This is it. I don't see how you can get out of this one. And I don't know if, if Wade knows these exist or not. I'm not sure if you're allowed to just introduce surprise evidence. So they have to know this exists. I'm really interested in seeing what the response to these tweets are going to be. It's going to be a, an interesting show. I, I wish, uh, you know, that trial would pick up a little more steam. The problem with it, you know, <laughs> the, the Vic Mignogna stuff, the people on that side that are involved in the case are very vocal and stupid. But for the most part, uh, Richard and Mark Wade have been very quiet about what's been going on until recently. So it's kind of just died down a little bit. But I, I would hope that maybe this will pick up a little more steam as well because it has a lot of the same implications that the Mignana case has, particularly in, you know, these NPCs running around and thinking that they can just destroy you. I think it's good to finally see these people getting some up and comings. And it's important that we win these cases because it could hopefully maybe put an end to all these people ruining lives. So don't worry about the delay, says Tug. I appreciate you taking time to answer questions with me. I like AP, honestly, as a person in the current climate out there. I am also trying to figure out ways to address it while dispelling the ghosts of Jawbreaker, as it were. On that, too, before asking anything else, is this conversation something you feel comfortable with me freely discussing it? You answered in a very forthright manner, and I appreciate it. And that's pretty much the last one that I have. So, so there's your smoking gun. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens if uh, Joe Dunn is going to get blasted with perjury. Because if Ben Dunn comes and sits on the stand and lies that this is true and real, he's going to get busted lying under oath. And that means his brother's going to have to come back and tell the story again. And depending on how that goes, I would imagine he would get in trouble for perjury. So we'll see. This is an interesting twist to this case. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's wrong thinkers in the industry. And this is probably in many other industries as well. We've seen it uh, recently with people like Tim Allen and such, James Woods, people that have a certain way of thinking. And all of the entertainment industries, they end up losing their jobs. And it's no different in comics. This confirms right here, thanks to Ben Dunn, that there is a blacklist of people that they don't want in the industry. We've talked about these silent networks in comics. Well, we have a confirmation of that. We have a confirmation of that now. So listen to this. Hey, thanks for getting back to me. It seems 
I seem to have lost your original email address, so I had to contact you through your channel. I will tag it this time. Anyway, I had a bit of an interesting conversation with the editorial staff at AP. Let me preface that I was not actually there, but talked to one of the guys at AP. Now, before I go on, I want you to, I want you to keep this in confidence. Oops. <laughs> you can follow up on this if you want, using other sources, of course. However, I wish to remain anonymous. Thanks. So this past Monday, Antarctic Press had an editorial meeting in San Antonio. I called to see the status of several books I have in the pipeline, and they told me they did not have time to look at them due to a jawbreaker situation. Immediately flags went up. Jawbreaker situation? I asked, what was that all about? I thought Antarctic Press was done with that on a non-legal level. Well, apparently, one of the artists of Jawbreakers, they did not say who it was. Let me answer the question for you there, is John Malin. John Malin came out when he was still working at Morrow on the book Cable and had some pretty, you know, spicy takes on what he thought about NPCs and what they really are. And this caused a big industry blowout. And they pretty much, he finished up his Cable run and he'll probably never work in mainstream comics again. All because, you know, he doesn't think the right way. And they've always denied that a blacklist existed. So, now it's been confirmed. They One of the artists came to AP with a comic project because apparently he had been blacklisted and could not easily find work. So AP was debating whether to pick up his comic or not. Apparently this artist had said some stuff on social media. That's exactly what I was talking about. And due to the toxic environment in the comics industry, they had to turn the project down. Later I found out, I am unsure if this is true, other artists such as Dave Dorman and Kelsey Shannon have also been blacklisted as well. Now, I cannot say for certainty if there is an actual blacklist, but apparently something is going on. Anyway, thought I'd share that with you. I think it is terrible that such talented artists are being denied by other publishers due to their political beliefs. I asked Anarch Press if they would reconsider, but they told me they wanted to avoid any baggage. Keep up the great work. Listen to you every day. So this ties into everything about Mark Wade because here's the thing with the comics industry and I'm sorry this I didn't know how to I didn't know how to tackle this video because I haven't really covered a lot of the comics craziness on this channel but I wanted to try my best to fill in knowledge gaps for people that don't know what's going on here and you know I tried my best I, I just you know <laughs> I tried my best so hopefully you got some takes on what's going on here but basically the comic industry is so small, it's shrunk down so much that, you know, there's this little group, they mostly all live in Portland, and they all hang out and talk, and it's like a gossip machine. If they don't like you, they'll spread rumors and say nasty things and pretty much make it so you never get work. And if you come in, you have to come in. So you like you don't usually just get a job at Marvel or DC Comics right away. You gotta work your way up. And a lot of these people, they're little fringe players, right? And as you're working your way up and they don't like you, they'll make sure you don't get past them. They're gatekeepers. And we've always all suspected that there was a blacklist. And it's now been 100% confirmed that there is a blacklist. You don't get work for wrong thing in comics. And the difference between comics and other industries is because it's so kind of small and, you know, confined they can easily destroy you in the business this is what's kind of led the constant downfall of the industry because these fringe players who use a lot of the times their status as a you know a poc or something like that or a, you know somebody that's got a certain tag you know what i'm saying these people use everything as shields They'll use that, and then if you disagree with them, well, you know, you're an ism-phobe and all this stuff. They've literally locked and gatekeeped out a lot of people and let only the people they like in, and it's really hurt the industry. Um, anybody that reads comics a lot knows that most of the comics out today suck, and <laughs> they'll destroy you, man. You're a comic shop, and you've got something to say? I don't know. They won't. They'll destroy them even. But the thing is, the comic shops if you don't know how it works, is Marvel doesn't sell to you. They sell to the comic shops. Comic shops have a lot of power, and they don't do anything. 
I, I really think comic books are, are kind of on their way out because of this. Indiegogos and Kickstarters will be the future if you want comic books. I think they'll survive in some form, but, you know, it has to burn to become a phoenix and rise again. But this is a preview of what any kind of entertainment media could become because if you let these people infest something so much, it just it just falls down and gets destroyed. We're seeing it right now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is going to be a hoot. It's going to be a hoot. But anyway, I uh, tried my best to cover this in like – a TLDR style so you guys could get the information that I, you know, thought would be helpful to understand this. But for you long-term fans, we have our evidence now. The blacklist exists, and Mark Wade is a, <laughs> is a liar and busted. I don't know what's going to happen with Anarchic Press, but, you know, we'll see. Anyway, I want to thank Tug for sending me all this information. Also, make sure you check out his Indiegogo, The Case of the Littlest Umbrella, this is the future of comics, any go-go's and stuff. Uh, I plan on doing one eventually, but I'm not doing it right now. So, you know, go over and support Tug's book. Give it a look. Check it out. See if it's for you. I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. Anyway, let me know what you're thinking about all this madness. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.